Hey guys, welcome back to Raise Create Cards. I've been missing you guys, and I'm really trying to see if I can't get more than one video a week uploaded. I'm trying to work that out. I may be able to increase it to two videos a week. So in the comments below, if you would, please let me know what kind of content you would like to see, what kind of ideas, techniques, anything like that that you would like to see, and I will do my utmost best to uh, get that done for you. All right, these are the cards that we did in last week's video, and these are the card kits that you can get for free with an order of uh, $35 in my online store. When I send you these kits, I will have the embossing done. Your card bases will be pre-cut. Your embossed layers will be pre-cut and embossed. However, I am not allowed to pre-stamp the sentiments um, or the images because they're all copyrighted um, by um, stamping up, okay? And so, it's not that I don't want to do that for you. I can't, okay? I'm, I'm uh, just not going there. But anyway, we did... This was card number one, Faith Over Fear, with the little vellum, that basic vellum patterns um, that is in the new mini catalog. And that's how we left off with that because I wasn't sure, you know, when the time comes to use this card, just what needs to be said on the inside. And again, for this card, um, we just stamped the hay there in the starry sky. And again, I left the inside pretty much blank put a little bit of stamping in there. And then this was our fun fold card, the thank you card, okay? And so if you miss that video, oops, if you miss that video, um, go back and uh, check it out. And for an order of 50 or more, I will send you those heart pearls, okay? So check out that video if you missed it. Um, I've got a few of these I've got to be getting cut so I can get ready to mail them out on the 18th. And I already have the new card class um, designed, okay? And I will give you a sneak peek of just one of the cards, okay? So here's just a sneak peek of one of them, okay? And uh, we'll be doing the new card class next Friday. All right, guys, so for today's design, this is what I came up with, okay? I love the new in colors, and with Christmas and everything going on, I kind of got derailed from using them. We are going to have these new in colors for another year, and I thought, yep, yep, we're ready for bright colors. We're ready for spring. We're ready for that green grass, the blue skies, the whole nine yards, all right? So that's the card we're going to make today. And in making the card, you see here I have got one partially done. And I'm going to finish it with you just so you can see how easy it is to do this. Uh, we are using the Pretty Flowers embossing folder. It is not 3D. And maybe with this dark cardstock behind it, you can kind of see that pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? So to use this, your sandwich and your Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss machine is going to be your base plate and two clear cutting plates. That's it. That's all you need. We are featuring, um, I am featuring the framed florets and one die out of the beautiful shapes die. And that was for the sentiment. And I am also using the scallop contour dies. Okay, so that is what we're using for today's card. And I've already got my little bits and pieces over here um, pre-cut. I used the largest um, con scallop contour die to create my basic white layer. So there it is. And I have a layer of Starry Sky. We have a card base of Tahitian Tide. Typical card base, eight and a half by four and a half. Scored it four and a quarter. All right. So let's lay, and I've got my pieces pre-cut for the inside too. We've got a little bit of stamping due on that yet. Okay, I have got a piece of vellum here that is um, four and five eighths by three and a quarter. Now, when you emboss it, you've got the embossing side where you're 
and I don't know how well you can tell, but your um, embossing is raised, okay? That's generally known as the right side, although we have had embossing folders, and this is one of them, where it looks equally as nice on the deboss side. But when you get ready to color your vellum, you want to flip it over and color from the back side. And it's always a really good idea to use your dark shades in your stamping blend. So I have dark Tahitian Tide, dark Sweet Sorbet, dark Orchid Oasis, and dark Parakeet Party. The only color I did not color with, and I was trying hard to get them all in there, was Starry Sky. However, I am using Starry Sky to stamp the sentiments, okay? Now, on your backside where it's debossed, you have got a little ridge all the way around, and it helps so much um, to stay in the lines. It really does help. And because these are alcohol-based, you're going to find that it dries really fast on the vellum. It's really easy, even though I'm a little ways away from this, it's really easy to follow that because that little ridge, that uh, deboss side, really helps you to stay in the lines. Nothing fancy, nothing um, really special. You're basically just scribbling the color onto the vellum. And because it's alcohol-based, it just blends beautifully all by itself. And it just... There's, you don't need your heat tool to dry it with or anything. It's not one of these projects where you got to go leave the room for a while while you do something else. And so, all right, guys. So, my schedule is behind again. Um, we had um, another frost mm, four or five nights ago where it got down into the 20s. And I've been biding my time waiting to start my onion seeds. Now, um, I didn't realize that what I could do is go ahead and start them. And then if I'm worried about, um, because I'm going to start these in uh, like water jugs, milk jugs. Um, some of you who do gardening have seen that technique. Um, and there are several videos on YouTube about how to start flower seeds and vegetable seeds using that method. And I guess I just didn't realize that it will protect those um, more than you think, I guess. And so I probably should have already had them started. Now we'll see. If it doesn't do really well for me this year, because the onions don't like it when it gets really, really dry and hot. So, um... Maybe I should have gone ahead and started them. If they don't do well, I will try again and sow them again in the fall. But I'll do my best to try to keep you guys updated. Um, if any of you out there have a garden or you start your seeds real early, I would love to hear from you and the method that you use. Um, I don't have space for a greenhouse. It just, I, I just don't. And so, I'm hoping that you're able to see what I'm doing here and how easy this is. Um, I don't have the space for it. And I really don't have the wherewithal indoors to set up like a bunch of grow lights or anything. So, I'm really dependent on whatever tips and tricks and techniques that I can use outdoors. Okay. Okay. I don't know if y'all can see this, and I don't know how well I could hold it up so that you can see, but I'm basically just taking, and I'm just touching that white outline. When the vellum gets embossed, it leaves that white outline, and it's pretty all by itself. I mean, I could have embossed this layer and not even colored anything. And you're going to see there's some light areas and dark areas. And if you miss a little spot, just go back in and squiggle it back in if you don't like that. But it's just so incredibly easy to do. 
and I'm just taking it and just lightly. This is my second one to do. Of course, I did my sample card. And now I'm doing this one. And can you see how, how clean and pretty my tip is? I mean, there's no fraying. There's no anything. It doesn't take pressure. You don't have to force it. And so now at this point, I can just kind of pick it up and look at it. And if I'm really not sure when I flip it over and I look at it, and then I can say, yeah, there's some places where I could go and fill it back in. I'm not going to. Guys, this doesn't have to be perfect, all right? It is just the overall effect. Um, I had already done all the leaves because there was probably more leaves than flowers, to be honest, in here. Probably was. And... I tried using the brush, but I was so afraid I would mess up the brush end. And so, for the middle of the sweet sorbet flowers, I am just putting in the dark Tahitian Tide. And even in these tiny areas, see how easy that is to get that in there? Yeah, not hard at all. If it was rocket science, I couldn't be doing it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I got to show y'all my new coffee mug, too. And I ordered it with all of you in mind. Um, there is a YouTube channel. I don't watch it all the time. I only watch it for, like, really important weather updates and things. Um, but it's called Ryan Hall, y'all. And he has just been amazing in uh, um, his weather channel. And weather, you know, we think about the weather channel, and it's like, oh, how dry and boring. He is anything but boring, guys. All right, what do you think? Isn't that pretty? Now, originally, when I went to design this card, I wanted a landscape card, okay? And I thought I could get away with it. You, you've got leaves coming up this way, and then they're drooping this way, and they're, you know, they're coming in from different angles, and I absolutely feel like, yes, you could do this as a landscape, but I ended up turning it this way, uh, which is the way the embossing folder is actually designed, but you get ready to replicate this card. You could absolutely do a landscape card if you want to. Okay, and we're going to be talking about the adhesive that I use to attach it to my card. Can you see any adhesive showing anywhere? Anywhere? Look at that. Isn't that awesome? It's amazing. I had the tool all this time, didn't realize it. Now, I've long known that you can take Tombow and on the other end where you've got that wide base, you can smear out an even layer of the ink and use that, and it won't show, but it's kind of messy, okay? It, I mean, it just is. It's messy. Tombow's really sticky. We have a love-hate relationship with Tombow, don't we? All right, let's go ahead and start putting the front of the card together, and I have a layer here of Starry Sky, and it is four by five and a quarter. I didn't do the skinny borders this time. Still haven't gone in... Uh, got out any more Tombow glue from my other uh, room, but that's okay. We're just going to continue on with my Barely Art glue. Um, I'm getting kind of low. It feels like I have less than half in this bottle. I did order another one. I have another brand new bottle, and speaking of that, I will show you how it comes. So, here's your bottle. Okay, there are several places that sell this. So you get your four ounce. Now you can buy a two ounce bottle if you wanna just kind of try it out and see what you think about it, okay? Satisfaction by them is guaranteed. And let me tell you something else. If this freezes, thaws right out and works the same, okay? So it doesn't matter if it freezes. And you also get this that has three different tips in it. However, I've already took this part and put my small, small tip in there. I don't know how well I can show you that on camera, but it's just a really fine, fine. However, there is a bigger tip if you want to put that on there. And so you get, you get your other tip 
and this has a little bit bigger hole. Not sure how well you can see that. And here is like a little cover if you want to use that for your tip. They also send one straight pin. Now, let me tell you from personal experience, <laughs> if you forget and you leave your bottle undone, so here's mine sitting here, a little bit of glue on top, and that may have helped protect it. This stuff dries faster than Tombow. Okay, it does. So when you get ready to put your pen in there, if it's already started to set up, you're going to have a hard time breaking through that. And you can bend your pens if you choose to use this method for closing it off. I've bent several. <laughs> um, they have now made available, and I know it's on their website, on Barely Art. Um, you can get a whole pack of orange and green tipped straight pins. So for now, this little thing right here does not come with it automatically. This will also work. You can take this and just slide that little silicone tip over it. Whichever method you prefer doesn't matter. They both work equally well. Or you can use, I done put it back in the tube, or you can use this little green one and cap it off that way because even though that may look like it's a hole, it's not. It's solid down in there. You can actually put that over it too to protect it. I like the pins. I don't know why I like the pins. And there have been times I've laid it down somewhere in my mess, couldn't find it. And so I reverted back to this. When I first ordered this glue, I did order an, uh, that little silicone tip just for safety. Okay. And it is a good glue. It's a strong glue. Um, some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may not. Let me get my stuff put back in here. But that's how it comes when you order. And so when I take this cap off of the new... Whoa, I can't believe I just did that. I forgot I took the seal out. I was checking it when I got it, guys. And so then this just screws on there. And I'll just go ahead and do that because I know at some point I am going to have... Oh, my heavens, and I got to flip my stuff over. Can't believe I did that. Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can. All right, let me get this. All right, we may get a card made today, guys. I don't know. And I'm just going to slide that in there. Um... I can see it. I don't have on my uh, stronger reading glasses today, but that's all right. Okay, I did get just a titch right there, a little bit right there. Okay, it's good. Now, let me close all this other stuff back and get that safely stashed. All right, now I am going to take a piece of paper. To, no, I'll just take my little cloth here. I'm just going to get that up best I can. Get that up. Because I'm not done with using this cardstock. And because it's not sticky like Tombow, like there, nothing is going to stick to it. It's not going to tear. All right, onward and upward. Okay, so using that largest scallop die, get rid of that lid before I get messed up. We're going to lay this down. And they will almost be ready to put down the um, vellum. And I'll show you how I did that. Now, some time ago, some time ago, I um, was looking because I had heard that there were companies out there that had special adhesive they made just for adhering vellum. One of the uh, suggestions that popped up was from scrapbook.com, scrapbook adhesives, easy runner, permanent fine adhesive. Eh, kinda, sorta, but depending on what I was doing, it could show, especially if my vellum was plain. And I thought, well, no, wait a minute, I got Stampin' Steel Plus. Let's see how that's gonna look. So what I did, guys, I took a strip of vellum, and this is, and you can see it, that is the scrapbook.com adhesive. 
but look at what the stamp and seal plus looks like you can't hardly see it i've got to flip it over for you to kind of pick up on that being there okay but look it's invisible it is invisible it is beautiful and so that is what i ended up using to attach my vellum now i have already lost my colored piece now where did that go what did i do with it because i just oh here it is i laid it over to the side okay and your vellum like i said it is cut three and a quarter by four and five eighths do pre-cut your vellum if you emboss vellum and then decide it's too big you're going to have a hard time cutting through, depending on what kind of a trimmer you have. You may have a hard time cutting through, which is what I did when I was designing this card. My piece was way too big, and so when I went to cut it down, you see where it just kind of nicked just a little tiny bit of that corner? It's not real noticeable. This is not going to keep me from uh, sending this to anyone that that i need to send that to but it's just a heads up there was another place where it tended to kind of jag the edges a little bit and so i just took my snips and i evened it out but just be mindful of that now again you got a choice you can use the deep off side that you colored on and your colors will be very bright or do like a lot of us do and like I did and turn it over to me the colors are still just as bright they're still just as vivid and so yeah I thought about working in starry sky and I probably could have put them in the middle of the the uh, sweet sorbet flowers and I didn't want to use the starry sky with the orchid oasis I used orchid oasis on this so um, yeah so we're gonna take our Stampin' Seal Plus and I am not afraid to use however much I need to use. And we're just going to put this down. I really don't want my vellum. It, it's okay if it's not all the way attached to a project. I've done many projects using vellum where it was just um, um, loose around the edges. And, of course, one of the other tricks that we do is to... Whatever we put on top of the vellum, then we glue just there on the underside, and that's fine, too. You're absolutely able to do that if you want to. And we're just going to lay that down. We're going to press, and I'm going to hold it back up really close. Do you see it? You can't see it. Not even in the unembossed, un uncolored areas. You can't, you can't really. Oh, it's awesome. So, who knew all this time Stampin' Up! had the perfect vellum adhesive, and I didn't know. I didn't know, guys. <laughs> all right, so we've got this. Now, what I did is I used one of the dies from the basic, uh, beautiful shape dies. I keep wanting to call it basic, but it's the beautiful shape dies, and it's that one right there, and I just stamped Celebrate from the Framed florets this one right here and die cut it with that and here's my little die cut okay and uh for the inside i could have used wishes for a beautiful birthday but i wanted to leave my options open so i am going to use for a special person on a special day um that way there that can incorporate a job promotion um, any kind of an accomplishment that someone has, not just birthday. All right, and we are going to take and put dimensionals on the back of this. I know I got out of the habit of using them, didn't I? In an effort to try to show people how they can be frugal with their card making and how they don't have to have all the stuff. Hang on just a second. I did not close up my current glue bottle. Oh, good. It went well. Um, and I've kind of got out of the habit of using them, and I realized that the other day, and I thought, man, I have so got to, I got to get on this. So just somewhere down in here, leave yourself a little bit of room if you want to do what I've done to put your bow 
and the bow comes from, so when our new end colors launched last year for the next two years, so these are good until 2024, they also introduced this really fine metallic thread. I'm not sure what you'd call it, ribbon. And there was one for all the end colors. So we have the um, Orchid Oasis, and that's the one I'm using on the card, although I could have used any of these colors, right? Here is the uh, Starry Sky. Here is the Parakeet Party, which is really pretty. I'm loving how that Parakeet Party is shining through, but yet there's some darker green in there as well. I thought that was awfully neat. And then here is the Tahitian Tide. I'm not using them very much, am I, guys? And then here is the Sweet Sorbet. Now, <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. It's like, um, I love that color, but I don't call that Sweet Sorbet. Um, it reminds me of a retired color we had a couple of years ago. No, I'm not going to say the name. I loved it. I hope one day they bring it back. But if they don't, I will find a use for that color right there. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if the manufacturer just didn't get enough dye in their stuff or what the deal was. But anyway, all right, let me get my uh, handy dandy take your pick tool. Love this thing. You know, if you took this away from me, I swear you might as well just take my right hand because I use this a lot and not just the pokey tool part of it. All of it. But, yes, I probably use the pokey tool end of it more than I use anything else. Now, I'm looking at it to see if it's truly hidden and I see a little bit sticking out. Let me finagle that back in there. Okay, I think we're okay. And I'm just, act I'm actually putting it on that tag, but right at the very bottom. Okay, and I thought that was a nice festive touch. There's no bling added to this. Now, I know it didn't show on the camera. On my original card, just, just this flower here, I added a little bit of Winkostella to see if I would like that. And I know, I know it's not really showing. I know it's not. Sorry. Um, and I decided, no, I didn't. I really liked the matte bright colors just shining in their own simple glory so i'm not going to be doing winka stella oh there's one of those uh dimension backings they love to travel don't they all right let's go ahead and get ready to do the inside we got some stamping to do and if i can get it open i think i got maybe just a titch of glue i do right there let me get my adhesive eraser and just remove that it's not like sticky but I know it's it now it's gone okay all right here we go let's get this on I have actually in the past forgot to put the cap on my Tombow which is very odd and not like me um, because usually uh, before I leave the craft room, I make sure that, A, there's no stamp pads that are open, that there are no stamps sitting there with ink on them, that uh, I got to use two hands to close this back up, guys, um, that I don't have any glue that's open, et cetera, et cetera. But there was one time I left the cap off of my Tombow glue until the next day. And when I came in and saw that, I was like, oh, no. Do you know it wasn't clogged? It was not. Whereas this would have been clogged. I don't know if you could have ever got that teeny, teeny, tiny tip ever cleaned out. I don't know. But anyway, um, I learned, and I learned very well to double check before I leave my card room. All right, so now I have a piece of basic white, and this is cut at three and three-fourths by five, and I want to take the Starry Sky ink, 
and that was Starry Sky used on the Celebrate, if I didn't tell you all that. And again, I'm using this sentiment for a special person on a special day. And I don't have my grid paper down, so make sure I've got it inked up really well. I'm not using the Stamparatus, so I just want to make real sure. Now, I'm going to sketch mine over just a hair. It's not going to be like in the middle, middle. And I'm doing that so that, let me give that good pressure. I've got another silicone mat under here, so I, I know I'm good. There we go. I got a good stamp. Uh, and then I wanted to take, let me close this up. I wanted to take some sweet sorbet and just stamp the outlines of flowers. Just kind of decorate, decorate the inside of the card. So I'm going to put that there. I'm not even paying attention as to the orientation of the flower. I'm going to put another one right down here. Okay. Just like that. Close this up. And then I'm going to take my leaf. Leaves. Leaf. And ink it up in Parakeet Party. And it's really easy because these are photopolymer. It is so easy to get that niched in. You don't have to mask off your flower. Oh, I didn't press all the way, did I? Can I line that back up again? Maybe. Hmm. I'm going to try it. <laughs> I may mess it up. I did a little bit, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I can always do another layer and glue it in, right, guys? So, shh, don't tell anybody. All right, we're going to do this. I just need to make sure I apply even pressure. Look how well that did. <laughs> oh, me. Had, had I brought it up to my face, yes, I probably could have probably could have lined that up just perfy, perfy. All right, so here we go. We're going to get this glued in, and then we're done, except I do want to show you how I did the envelope. Um, I told you in the last video that I was bad about not doing the envelopes. Well, yes, that was because I'm lazy. It's not because I don't know how. I do. Uh, we know all the little tips and tricks for decorating an envelope or using some kind of uh, paper on the back flap or whatever, right? We know all those little tips and tricks. We, it's just I got lazy. I did. I got lazy. So, all right, here we go. Now, how hard was that to put together? It is simple, cheerful, bright, inviting, and uh, anybody would be happy to get that card. Now, I do have a personal stamp. When I think about it, and I will put it on the back of my card here. Let me get it down um, four or five years ago, my middle son sent me a mint machine. If you've never heard of it, look it up on YouTube. Just, uh, it's by the company called Silhouette, and it's called the Mint Machine. You can make your own stamps. And you get the ink, and you ink it up after you've made your, your design, your saying, whatever you want to make a stamp for. And uh, it, each inking is good for up to about 50 stamps, okay? And I've got that dimensional under that. So let me kind of straighten this up. Make sure I've got this going the right way. Do I have it going the right way? Let me stamp off on something. Yes, I do. All right. And then, and I just ink this up with black ink, okay? And I'm just going to hold it for a minute because it's been, been a little bit since I've used this. Stamped with love and prayers. Isn't that cute? I was able to, the software is free, 
for the mint machine. And you just put that on your computer. You open it up. They have a video showing you step-by-step -step how to use the software. It is not complicated. Guys, if I could figure it out, anybody can figure it out. But anyway, um, it's been very invaluable, and I, I've used it quite a bit. You can do address stamps. You can do anything you want to. Um, and they do have different sizes. They have some that are bigger. I think they have some circles. Um, they have squares. So just about anything you might need to make your own stamp, they've got it. Okay. Very reasonably priced. And the little machine just hooks up to your computer. I actually have mine here. I'm going to unplug the power cord from it. Okay, here it is. Silhouette Mint. Look how small. Look at that. Look at that. And uh, here's your little power button. And it sends it through. And I think it does heat up on the inside to make that part that you put on top of your stamp. But it's an ingenious design. Y'all might want to check that out if you have a need for something like that in your card room. All right, let me get this picked up. I can pick it up and show you the envelope. So here's the envelope. I embossed the back flap with that same embossing folder. Um, didn't even try to color it or anything. I thought the embossing was pretty enough to stand on its own. And then on the front, I stamped three of those flowers and put in three of those leaves, and voila, I'm done. How effective and simple and cute, right? Guys, have a very, very blessed weekend. God is good all the time. Um, and I'm not even sure if I, did I show y'all the little new mug that I ordered? I think I did. Anyway, I will do my best to have that in the video sometimes, just so y'all are reminded, I do love you. God loves you even more. And uh, so you just have a very, very blessed day. If you still need to get that host code, right there it is, PQT692 V as in Victor 9. All right, guys, love y'all. Have a blessed weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.